We had some much needed renovations done at our condo, so Donna and I decided to take the opportunity to head on board Intention for what we thought would be a two night stay. More on that later. For now, it's enough to say that there are an almost unlimited number of places we could have gone for two nights on board. There are dozens of islands within a few hours of our marina, and many times that many if we were willing to sail farther afield. But the weather was supposed to be calm for the next three days, so we elected to motor over to Sydney Spit, part of the Gulf Islands National Park. It is kind of a um, muggy day here aboard Intention. We're going to expand our our early adventures here a little bit and um, in a little while we're going to be slipping the lines from the dock we're going to be heading over to Sydney Spit and we're going to catch a mooring ball there and uh, well hopefully <laughs> we're going to catch a mooring ball there and we're going to stay there for a couple of nights at the mooring ball. Sydney Spit is part of the Gulf Islands Marine National Park I'm going to put the actual name on the screen here um, we stayed there on our five-night live-aboard uh, basic cruising standard course for one night and we quite liked it. We didn't really have much time to explore the, uh, the island, Sydney Island, so we're going to do that a little more and we're going to share that with you. All right. And here we are at Sydney Spit. <laughs> And there we are, snagged on a mooring buoy. Our home is just over there, about five nautical miles away. Okay, so this was not exactly a first for Donna and I, but it's a first for us on board Intention. Um, we snagged a mooring buoy, you can see it well, there, I, sh I showed it on camera. Um, here at Sydney Spit they have mooring balls and so we um, hooked on to that and we'll stay here for two nights while some work is done in our condo. Um, it was uh, we didn't catch the mooring boy the first time but we have lots of time so we just went past the mooring boy and on the second try we got it and uh, you know we kind of have to learn how we're going to work together to do this. It is um, about almost five feet to the water from the bow there. And so that's quite a reach for Donna. It's hard for her to get down there. It was hard enough for me to get down there. So, um, you know, I think we need to keep that in mind next time we uh, snag a mooring ball. Anyway, we're going to show you what we do over the next couple of days as we just sit here and uh, chill and um, explore Sydney Island over there. We may not have gone very far to moor at Sydney Spit, but I think this view of the sunset over Vancouver Island will show you why it doesn't really matter to us where we are. Every place is beautiful, and as long as we're together, we're happy. The beautiful sunny weather of the previous day didn't greet us when we woke up that morning. Something else did, though. Okay, this is take two because I filmed the last piece in slow-mo. Uh, <laughs> so we woke up this morning to the sound of what sounded like paws on our deck. And this has happened before and Donna's gone. It sounds like there's a dog or something up on deck. It sure sounds like that. And it's like, yeah, I, I know it sounds like that. I'm sure that's not the case, though. So I uh, got up this morning and um, went and looked out this porthole here, uh, or sorry, port light, and um, yeah, there was an otter right there, and he jumped up on our deck, and uh, I've got some uh, delicious slow-mo footage of him. Uh, he's very cute, and he seemed to not care that we were watching him at all. So uh, welcome to the morning on Intention. We're going to have our coffee and breakfast. And um, it's a sort of a drizzly, dreary day here uh, at Sydney Spit today. It was gorgeous yesterday. But um, we'll probably still put the dinghy in the water and head over to Sydney Island and go for a walk and a hike. And we'll take you along on that adventure. This was a river otter, by the way, not a sea otter. You can tell by his long, pointed tail. Sea otters have short, flat tails, a little like a beaver tail. 
I think this guy just wanted to get out of the ocean and warm up a little. He had a nap on our lines and didn't seem at all bothered by the fact that Donna and I were only about eight feet away, watching him the whole time. He stayed on board in tension for almost an hour, then he slipped back in the water, probably in search of food. I've edited this clip a bit, but I'll post the whole slow-mo clip to our YouTube channel if you need to watch eight and a half minutes of ottery cuteness. For now, back to breakfast. One of our morning routine is to take turns making lattes for each other. Space is limited on board intention, so we bought an espresso machine and Arochino milk frother. The results we get aren't what you'd get at a good coffee shop, but they are great for onboard coffee. Okay, it's one of those boat life moments. Um, we were really excited to be uh, trying a shower on board intention here, and uh, the furnace was on, we had lots of hot water, it was great. Uh, I was washing the dishes from breakfast and the water pressure just tapered off to nothing. Uh, and our water pump isn't kicking on. So what I think has happened is that the water pump has packed it in. The water pump isn't original to the boat as far as I can tell, but it is certainly uh, not something we've replaced in the two years we've owned the boat. So I'm going to get a new water pump for the boat and replace it and hopefully that will solve the problem. This really isn't going to change our plans for staying at Sydney Spit. We're still going to stay here tonight. We have water in bottles. Uh, we have um, everything we need. So we really don't need running water uh, for 24 hours. We'll go back to the marina tomorrow and we'll worry about the boat work then. Hello, Donna here. I know, is it crazy or what? I'm going to uh, show you John launching our tender which is going to be named in tender. Ha, ha. Anyway, okay, bye. He's just putting in the plug because we open the plug in case it rains overnight when we remember so we don't get 20 gallons of uh, water. And now he's releasing the ropes that hold tender to the arch. I mean, there's also Dyneema that we will release once we get in the tender. And he's doing some good wrangling. We'll also get lots of, you know, good pictures of John's back and <laughs> look at that, it's magical. Whee! Bye baby! Splash, that splash was our boat hitting the water. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop. We have an electric outboard, but we haven't bought a lot to secure it yet. We rode over to Sydney Spit only about 200 meters away, but that was long enough to show me that I really need to practice rowing a lot more. So is Donna here behind the camera. I know that the Bahamas and the Caribbean and all the tropical places are incredible and amazing, but a lot of times you don't get a beach all to yourself like this sydney island has a lot of arbutus trees these trees closely related to the spanish and californian madrone trees are very unique they're an evergreen tree but they have leaves unlike other broadleaf trees however they always have leaves new leaves grow out beyond the existing ones and once they are established the old leaves dry up and fall off Arbutus trees also shed their bark, losing the golden brown layer that you see here and exposing a pistachio green layer underneath. Arbutus can only grow within 8 kilometers of the ocean, they can only grow in soil that is dry or very well drained, and they will not grow in the shade. 
Despite all of these constraints, they're very common around Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. They're also one of my favorite trees of all times. Sydney Island has a number of very easy hiking trails leading all through the park and to the campground on the southern end of the parkland. The park is actually only at the northern end of the island, though. There are private residences beyond that to the south. We didn't actually explore the island very much because, unfortunately, Donna had started to get blisters on her feet. We'll be back, though. That's not a problem. So do you think anyone heard this tree fall in the forest? The squirrel did. That squirrel did? Let's see the squirrel. He's right on the branch. Yes. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. So I'm just going to uh, show you how we pulled the dinghy out of the water. We've got these snap shackles on Dyneema, and then we have the Dyneema loops in the uh, two in the stern, one in the bow of the boat. So I'll hook those up like that. Donna has already done the one in the bow. And now the dinghy is secured to the crane and we can get on board and uh, haul it up. Yay. So if you see, we have lines coming from both sides of the crane here up to these blocks and then down here through this clutch. I'm gonna close that clutch now and then through this block and I've taken the line up to our cabin top winch there, and I'm just gonna winch up the, the dinghy. And I'm gonna videotape it coming up, cause you know, winching is, is winching. But look, it's just magical. Woo! Okay, it's not quiet, but it's cool. You're doing great. There we go. All the mechanics. All right. One of the things we highlighted in episode two, where we did our basic cruising standard on board Gord's boat, was all of the wonderful food that we ate. And um, we've tried to keep up that tradition uh, aboard intention. So I'm going to show you what we have for supper tonight. So this is tonight's supper. We have barbecued spare ribs and homemade mac and cheese and a kale salad for, for um, probably dessert because there's no room on the plate for more food. There are a lot of shoals and sandbars around Sydney Spit. So although the mooring field has good depth, the entry to it is a little tricky for a boat-like intention and it's six and a half foot draft. We came in at high tide, which simplified things as far as navigation goes, but things were a bit different when we departed at low tide with almost two and a half meters less depth to work with, and a motor yacht anchored in the middle of the navigable channel. So would you care to tell people what our little moment of excitement there was and what we're doing right now? <laughs> Ah, uh, sure. Um, so we're heading out of Sydney Spit, and the challenge is there are some very shallow shallows, <laughs> and you can't see them, of course. They're on the chart, and so we were watching the our depth meter, and we draw six and a half feet, six yeah. feet. And there's crab pots everywhere. And the one thing we're, we're, we're not having is fog. That would be just supremely ideal. But, okay, so <laughs> it's low tide. <laughs> and um, 
our depth meter was reading, um, tracking down 10 feet, 8 feet, 6 feet, to what did you get to? 4.9. 4.9. Okay, now we're coming up to another bit here, so um, maybe put away the camera and we'll just feel. A depth sounder is actually a pretty important instrument on board. We need to drop a weighted line in the water and measure how far it actually is to the bottom, then compare that to our depth meter. Ideally, we'd like our depth meter to show how much water is under our keel so nobody has to do maths to figure out if we are in safe water. First, we need to figure out how far off the measurements are from reality. And there you have it. Um... Two nights, uh, three days on board. Uh, it was a really good opportunity for us to learn what it's like to live on intention. Um, we cooked, we cleaned up, we entertained ourselves. We slept really quite well, I think. We had some fun. Um, we've discovered some things that are uh, now broken on the boat, like our water pump. And there's a GFI outlet up here that I'm going to try swapping out because it seems a little bit touchy. It uh, trips every time I plug my laptop in, but the outlets on the other side are fine. <clears throat> so we're going to just um, go through our fridge and figure out what we're going to leave on board and what we're going to take. And then we're going to have shower here at the marina because our condo still doesn't have a working shower. And um, we'll think about what our next adventure will be. First, we have to replace the water pump, or at least fix it. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. So, spoiler alert, that was not the end of our adventure. When we got back to our condo, we discovered that the contractor had removed the only toilet we have. It was necessary for him to have better access to install the new shower enclosure, so we totally understood. That said, we only have the one bathroom at our condo, so we really couldn't live there while the renovation was going on. We wound up living on board in tension for almost two full weeks, and it was wonderful. We slept really well on board, we enjoyed living on board our beautiful boat, and we were able to tackle a whole laundry list of little projects that we never seemed to find the time to take care of. Oh, and the water pump? I bought a new one, but before I installed it, I thought I might as well give a little um, percussive maintenance a try. I tapped the pressure sensor with a few carefully measured blows of a precision hammer, and the pump growled into life. We're keeping the replacement water pump, though. It's not a question of if the old one will fail, it's a question of when. And now we have a brand new pump just waiting to go in. We've learned a lot since we bought Intention. We're actually starting to feel ready to head to the tropics now. We still have a lot of things to do and a lot more to learn, but our confidence is growing rapidly. The more time we spend on board Intention, the more time we want to spend on board. Subscribe to keep informed of our next steps. By this time next year, we intend to be in Mexico enjoying the Sea of Cortez. See you next time.